The Middle Ages were the time of the formation of the European world. In 476, the last Roman emperor of the West abdicated before Odovacar the Ostrogoth. By the year 800, when Charles, King of the Franks, was crowned emperor at Rome, waves of unceasing barbarian invasions, those of the Goths, the Langobards, the Franks, had dispersed the former population with the Italics, the Gauls, the Iberians, the Celts, to result finally in the development of new European nations and new national languages. Christian doctrine became the basis of unifying Europe, the cornerstone of medieval culture with all its strikingly high artistic achievements. Medieval art was almost exclusively ecclesiastical, and its center of activities was the church. Architecture concentrated on creating a house of God, thus incorporating various types and objects of applied art, liturgical objects, carved holy images, liturgical books, gospel, psalter, sacramentary, and others, with their precious decorated covers. They were made at first predominantly in the monasteries, often commissioned by noblemen and executed sometimes by monks, sometimes by laymen. But side by side with ecclesiastical workshops, the secular crafts developed more and more actively, especially from the 11th century, working now to decorate the big new city cathedrals, now to satisfy the great demand for objects of private devotion as well as for adorned weapons, furniture, sumptuous tapestries, and cloths. Craftsmen, often of great creative power, produced works of rare perfection for the wealthy. Many such works are displayed in the medieval section of the Hermitage collections. According to the medieval world outlook, all forms, including those of applied art, are meaningful as well as multifunctional. Such an object as the church reliquary was intended to hold a relic, but it often took on the form of some holy figure, here of a deacon, probably Saint Etienne. The reliquary was executed in the late 12th century in France. An unknown master chased the silver plates and then set them upon a wooden block. He exaggerated the deacon's head and hands, not because of his inability to maintain the correct proportions, but seeking to emphasize the facial expression with its devout concentration, as well as the protecting gesture with which the figure holds the relic case. The ornamentation of this figurine, which includes a filigree wicker motif, and precious stones along the deacon's sacerdotal robes, as well as the base, is reminiscent of the earlier age of the so-called barbarian kingdoms from the 5th to the mid-8th centuries. The Merovingian dynasty of the Franks, the Langobardian one in northern Italy, the West Gothic on the peninsula. Such simple formed but highly precious ornamentation was characteristic of the decorative art of barbarian goldsmiths spiritual beauty, the piety which ennobles imperfect human nature, was the major aim of the medieval artist. The art of the goldsmith followed a development parallel to that of monumental sculpture. Severe monumentalism, characteristic of the Romanesque style, is distinctive in this small statue, but it is already combined with a more subtle treatment of the facial expression. The body is merely a type, but the face achieves individuality, for from the very beginning of the Gothic style, the demand for the portrayal of mental qualities led to the expression of psychological values.
Medieval craftsmen displayed outstanding skill in combining the expressiveness of allegorical struggles between good, here the knight, and evil, here the dragon, with the specific forms of everyday objects. In this bronze ablution vessel, two knights' locks of hair, done in the fashion of that time, serve as two spouts for water. This ablution vessel, for ceremonial occasions, incorporates the lion's image as a symbol of secular power. The classic shape conforms to the rather austere though elegant ornament. Near the castle of Duke Heinrich der Lowe in Braunschweig, a lion's effigy was erected, which became a model for many objects of applied art. This ablution vessel incorporates the figures of Aristotle, standing on all fours, and Compaspe, who is riding on his back. This affirms woman's power over man. Compaspe was a renowned courtesan during the rule of Alexander of Macedonia, whose teacher was the philosopher Aristotle. Her beauty is difficult to determine here because of the typically medieval schematicism of the representation. The surface of this precious casket bears a narrative about the sufferings and spiritual deeds of Saint Valeria, whose image reminds us of the Christian history of Gaul and Aquitaine. Against the gilded background, the flattened incorporeal figures appear as a subtle and colorful decorative pattern. This molded reliquary is a rarefied example of medieval craftsmanship. The austere monumentalism, which Romanesque art is remarkable for, combines here with the refined spirituality of the facial expression, already foreshadowing the Gothic style. The grandiose Gothic cathedrals were raised to soaring heights, stressing the vertical principle in the compositional rhythm to attain an imaginary space, elevating man's mind into the supernatural sphere. The image of the Gothic cathedral was represented in 1474 by the master Hans Risenberg from Tallinn. He created a silver reliquary or monstrous in Latin, monstrati, intended to display a relic. The talented craftsman made a complicated compositional structure where a glass cylinder, which was used as case for a holy relic, was framed by the silver imitation of a real architectural construction with spires, pinnacles, pointed arches, crotchet, galleries ornamented with tracery, statuary, and gratings. 
The skilled hands of this goldsmith turned metal into smart silver tracery, which one can compare with the most perfect stone tracery in the ornate structure of Gothic cathedrals, in the system of which, as is known, medieval sculpture began an existence independent of architectural functions. The courtly image of a noble beauty played an important part in the art and literature of the Gothic age. Among the favorite personages, the most popular were Tristan and Isolde, who accidentally drank a magic potion and were thus bound by ties of irresistible love. Their story is represented in five plates with exquisite ivory carving, which were made by German craftsmen in the mid-15th century. They could be considered as illustrations to the poem by Gottfried of Strasbourg, the German poet who lived in the 13th century and made the versification of the old legend from Brittany. The secular features one can see in the tapestry representation of Mary with the Archangel Michael. Woven in 1477, it was intended for a church altar curtain its treatment calls to mind a scene from the courtly life of that time. The figures of a crowned Mary, framed by a halo, of the Archangel Michael, represented at the moment of weighing the soul's sins and good deeds, and a young saint, with a heart and a sword in his hands, were embroidered with great accuracy and a rather naive thoroughness inherent in the craftsmen of popular art. This earthenware vessel, covered with glaze of metallic lucidity, the so-called luster technique, represents a splendid example of the rare Alhambra vases of the 14th century. They were named after the palace of the last Moorish rulers of Spain, Alhambra, in the basement of which the first of these vessels were found in the 16th century. The Hermitage vase was found in the 19th century. The crowned Mary, standing with a golden halo, 
the Archangel Michael who is weighing the good and the bad deeds of a soul, the youth who is depicted as a holy knight with heart and sword. All these figures are embroidered brilliantly, and the naive detailed narrative calls to mind folk embroidery. The big head, with its immovable face and the heavy forms of the figurine itself, are full of solemnity and mysterious force. This statuary, carved of ivory, was meant to express the transcendental spiritual beauty, which was the only aim of medieval art. This figurine carved of ivory was probably made in the provinces and not in Paris. The Gothic subtlety and the slightly secular appearance of the crowned Mary were the rather rough naivete of popular art. Episodes of the irresistible and forbidden love between the queen Isolde and the knight Tristan are enfolded in the skillful carving of the ivory plates. These plates probably adorned the casket of a noble lady. The splendid armor on the knight's mannequins, which stand along the wall in the knight's hall in the Hermitage, as well as various weapons in the showcases, form a rich collection that displays the trends in technique and decoration of weapons for different countries of Europe from the 15th to the 17th century. This reliquary, commissioned for St. Nicholas's Cathedral in Revel, now Tallinn, was meant to display holy relics in the course of a liturgy. During the capture of Revel by the Russian army in 1711, this monstrance was taken by Prince Alexander Danilovich Menshikov, then passed to the private museum of Peter I, where it remained till the end of the 19th century. <laughs> 